Yo. The band is back together. That's right. We haven't done a video in a while, so... Uh, if you're wondering, we made a deal with the devil, bring the Hex Girls to life. But instead, he thought we said, burn the town down, which he did. So we had to, re we had to rent out our basement to this German guy who did time travel stuff. And now our rent's like $5,000 a month due to zombies, dinosaurs, and other things. So we've been looking for another place. Don't you hate when that happens? Mm -hmm. What can you do? But anyway, welcome to the newest episode of Dead Level Never try to make a deal over the phone. Yeah. Things we are always back. Bad, especially if you have bad reception. With a top five list this time of sequels. That should happen. Sequels that we want to see. And each of us are going to do our top five. And it doesn't necessarily mean a sequel that was planned or in production but didn't happen. It can also mean a movie that we'd like to see a sequel to. Um, one that was never like an actual... Like, or actually a sequel that should have been a sequel instead of the actual sequel. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. some sequels are terrible. I'm not going to count uh, like an Evil Dead 4 or Nightmare Darkness 2 because we've got the Ash vs. Evil Dead TV series. That's basically what that is. So there's also the video games like... Um, Fistful of Boomstick and Regeneration, so I'm not going to say Evil Dead 4, but anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'll go with my number 5, and that would be a new Friday the 13th film Ooh. that follows the original continuity. Now, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Halloween both went back to their roots with the original continuity and ignoring all the remakes. Um, both of them made a sequel, well, Halloween hasn't come out yet, it's coming out later this year, review for that's coming soon. Uh, both of them made a direct sequel to the original movie, which is interesting. Um, Friday the 13th hasn't done that yet, I, and it'd be so easy to do, too. Friday the 13th, it's got a Jason movie's got to be like the, one of the easiest movies you can make. It wouldn't need like a big budget or anything. Um, I want to see one um, connect to the original movies, take place uh, after Freddy vs. Jason, where he walks out of the water holding Freddy's head, or hell, even after Part 8 or 9. I don't care, just make it, <laughs> just, just not after Jason X. I don't want another one in space in the future. Um, one was I like enough. Jason X. I do too, but one was enough. <laughs> I mean, it's a bad movie, but it's awesome. Um, yeah, so my vision for a new Friday Thirteenth film take place in the original continuity after Freddy vs. Jason. Have it back at Crystal Lake, set in the winter time. Snow on the ground, uh, snow on the ice on the trees, a frozen Crystal Lake, um, and have Corey Feldman or Tom Matthews return as Tommy Jarvis come back to face. The evil masked man from his past once more. Wait, Corey Feldman was Tommy Jarvis? Yeah, in, part, in uh, the final chapter. Part uh, four. Oh, yeah. He was, when he was a kid. Oh, uh, wait, that's right. Did and, uh, yeah, Corey Feldman and John Shepard played him in part five. And then Tom Matthews, my favorite uh, Tommy, hey, wait, wait, wait. was part six. Part, part five and six are like one big thing, right? Or are they two separate things? Mm, part six kind of ignores part five, actually. Cause I'm saying kinda, cause, like it's weird if you don't know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but anyway, yeah, a, a new Friday the 13th film set in the original continuity, Winter Time, Tommy Jar Jarvis returning, uh, maybe some flashbacks. Um, I also wouldn't mind seeing a prequel showing Jason when he was a kid and his mom, Pamela Voorhees, when she first had him. Maybe some references to his father, Elias Voorhees, what happened with him, his story. Hell, they made prequels to, you know, just about every other, a lot of other horror franchises. The recent Leatherface, see my review for that. Uh, I thought it was interesting because it had a lot of psycho killers that weren't part of the Sawyer clan, but it was more of a what-if scenario, really. And, but anyway, see my review of that for more details. You know be cool? I want to see a new Friday the 13th film. Jason needs to like, come back. In that, if he's little, he has to have like that, that Eric Stoltz in mask kind of face. Oh, yeah. Which <laughs> like, went right the mask. Okay. Yeah. Number five. A Nightmare on Elm Street prequel. Now, I this agree. will start out at I the agree. asylum with his mom... Leading into her, Amanda Kruger. Yeah, leading into her getting you know whated by a hundred guys, and then going into like the years after until she has him, and she dies. It's never explained how she dies. Three guesses how, but yeah, like, I want to see like how what happened to her because like it's touched upon. And we get like a flashback in one of the movies. That's about it. But like, it seems like in the um, part five, like. It wasn't an accident she got trapped in there, like you asked me, like it was on purpose or something. Anyways, yeah, like I want to see like more of her backstory, because like, she's, that's an interesting character that they didn't really look into. Okay, it's my number five. Yeah, she was a ghost on uh, part three, and then uh, she gave the backstory to Craig Watson's character, and then they kind of went into more uh, 
background in part five actually showed a flashback to where she was raped by those 100 maniacs. One of them was played by Robert England, wink, wink. Um, but yeah, they should be, I'd love to see a prequel of both Friday the 13th and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. I don't like remakes, but I'm all for prequels. I love going into the backstory. I love seeing connections to the original films. I love seeing things being set up, characters being you know, set up for something later that I'm already in love with. And uh, it'd be cool to see uh, Freddy when he was the Springwood slasher before he was burned. Um, and I'm not talking about f the scenes in Freddy's Dead, the flashbacks in Freddy's Dead showing his childhood, Alice Cooper being his stepdad, all that stuff. No, 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 no. I want to see a full prequel showing him actually become Freddy Krueger. And, and one for Jason would be great, too. So I agree with that one. But anyway, my number four would be um, yet another thing Jason-related, Jason versus Michael. And I talked about this a little in one of my tag videos um, after I saw Freddy vs. Jason, I thought that we'd see, like, all the big, like, at least the big four slashers, Jason, Freddy, Michael Myers, and Leatherface, in crossovers. I thought maybe they would make one with all four of them, which would have been awesome. Um, uh, I know there's different, you know, rights and copyright issues, but the main one I want to see is Jason vs. Michael, because I think those two characters would work really well in a movie together. Um, you know, two silent, masked killers, but the... You know, since they're both silent and they don't talk, they you know would have means, to have... Right? You're going to have to have a large cast of people that never shut up. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, they have to have a character from each one of them's past. Preferably for Jason, Tommy Jarvis. And I'd love to see Dr. Loomis um, be there, too, but it's Didn't been so long. Did he have a heart attack in one of those movies and die? Oh, the continuity is all messed up when it comes or to him. Or get blown but... up or something. <laughs> yeah, but he always comes back. He's just like Michael. Uh, but he'd be really old now. Like, you know, say he was like 50 or even like 40s and... Uh, the first film, he'd be like 90, like 80 or 90 now. So, uh, they had maybe said it like later, like like in the past, maybe said it like in the 90s or something. I don't know, maybe after Curse of Michael Myers. They I don't get, know where they said it. They, they should get Charles Dance to be Loomis. <laughs> yeah, I, I always thought a Brian Cox would be good. Um, Malcolm McDowell was good in the remake in, in the first one, but in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, he sucked. But yeah, however they do it, I'd love to see a Jason versus Michael as long as they're respectful to each character and you know, seeing them fight, I think would be pretty cool. Number four. It's got to be Sabretooth. Now, like, I want to see a movie. Like, we've seen X-Men Origins, Wolverine, how that ended. Then we get Tex-Men. I want to see what happened between that, because apparently... Because for some reason, Tyler Maine didn't talk at all in the first X-Men movie. I believe Schreiber talked a lot, so... Yeah, yeah it, was. it was a very different yeah. character. Because I want to see, like... What happened in between it to change him so much where he doesn't recognize his brother and all that? Cause like, like, well, Origin Wolverine like opened so many doors, like, but it raised so many questions about the next movie. Cause like, yeah, cause like, I'm thinking like something happened to his brain too. Cause like, apparently he can just growl. Maybe he further mutated because he looked a lot more animalistic when in the first uh, X Men film when Tyler Maiden played him as opposed to Leif Schreiber. Kind of like yeah. Hank McCoy's Beast. He became more yeah. of a beast. <laughs> yeah, like, I like how, like, Tyler Maine's thing, like, kept that look for Sabretooth in the comics and follow-up TV shows. He had the better look. But I think Schreiber gave a better performance. He was, like, one of the best things about X-Men Origins Wolverine. I think they're ignoring that movie, though. Because, like, with uh, X-Men Apocalypse, they retold origin, Wolverine's origin, sort of. They already showed, like, after he'd been, you know, got the adamantium skeleton. It's it wasn't weird, like... anything like... Uh, Origins. It's kind of weird to me. Like I kept thinking, like he was doing like a young Ron Perlman. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. It'd be cool to see. I'd love to see a Sabretooth movie though. So I'm all for that. Yeah. All right, for me, my number three would be, and this was a movie they actually did talk about. They even made uh, people even made fan art and fan uh, storylines and everything. Uh, House of Reanimator, Ooh. a fourth Reanimator movie. We have Reanimator, Bride of Reanimator, Beyond Reanimator. We did a Reanimator video, so check that out. And I've also reviewed all three movies. Um, check this out for more info but uh, I'd love to see a fourth film and allegedly this one was going to take place in the White House this is back when George Bush was president that, that's how long ago they've been talking about this um, it's going to take place in the White House with a zombie president, zombie vice president all that stuff, Herbert West um, you know, in, in, in Washington D.C. reanimating political figures I think that would have been awesome and I love the, the title House of Reanimators just like Bride of Reanimators a throwback to the old Universal law uh, monsters and uh, i think that would be awesome i did but even if they don't do house of reanimator i'd love to see a fourth reanimator film with jeffrey combs returning as herbert west that would just be great um so please, please don't remake reanimator just to make another sequel please or even a prequel showing how he became a scientist and how he developed the serum because they never really were clear on that in the movies how he developed the reagent that brings back the dead um brings it back to life but i just want to see another reanimator movie make it happen 
Okay, my number three is another Hulk movie. Yes! I, yes. I agree. Because they set up the leader yep. at the end of <clears throat> The Incredible Hulk, and that hasn't gone anywhere. Yes. They had Samuel Stearns. They showed his cranium expanding as it grinned maniacally. One of the leaders were my favorite comic book villains. I want to see it. It's been 10 years now. 10 years. We've seen all the other... We've seen the Red Skull. We've seen plenty of Loki. We've seen a bastardized, horrible version of the Mandarin. Fucking have the leader in it. Quit... Uh, Sorry, I'm going to rant Actually, here. Like, Make another Hulk film. We've seen Iron Man has had three movies. Captain America has had three movies. Thor's had three movies. What about my favorite Avenger? My second favorite Marvel character next to Spider-Man? What about the Hulk, damn it? Actually, mm. they answered that question about the Mandarin. That that guy wasn't the Mandarin. The real Mandarin. I know, shows I know. Up and Hail to the King. Yeah, I agree. But we still haven't seen the real Mandarin in an actual Marvel movie. So I'm still pissed off what they did in Iron Man 3. But yeah, I'd love to see... I don't even care if they make it in another, another Avengers movie... Or uh, if they do, like, Iron Man teamed up with the Hulk. I want to see the leader. I want to see another Hulk movie. Um, he was good in Thor Ragnarok, though. I'm glad the Hulk was, like, actually had a pretty big part in that. And he became a separate character with actually dialogue of his own, not just Bruce Banner's angry, monstrous side. So that was good. But, yeah, make another Hulk film, please. And definitely have the leader. They yeah, like, set him up I like nowhere. I want to see this, like, where he creates other Hulk villains. Like, he makes another Abomination. Yes. He makes the UFOs. He makes... Zax. The Missing Link, Wendigo, like... I want to see Doc Samson. Beast. I want to see Doc Samson. They had the character Leonard Samson in The Incredible Hulk, again, ten years ago, and it went nowhere. I want to see Doc Samson. I want to see The Leader. I want to see The Abomination Return. Uh, I want to see another Hulk film. Dead. But he has to look like a giant green fish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. make him look more like The Abomination. I did like the how comics, um, the, and the, the Abomination in the movie looked like The Ultimate Abomination, which yeah, is pretty good. Yeah, he did look really cool. And, uh, but, you know... Tim Roth did a good job playing uh, Emma Blonsky, too. And I really liked Edward Norton as Bruce Banner. But Mark Ruffalo is really good, too. Yeah. But yeah, make another Hulk film. All right, for my number two, um, yet another horror film, obviously, um, be Fright Night Part 3. And I don't mean the remakes, the 2011 version of the god-awful sequel slash remake that had nothing to do with it, New Blood or whatever. Pretend those didn't exist. I'm talking about the original from 1985 and the sequel from 1988. I would have liked to love to follow up a Part 3. And what I would have done is... Um, if they made it now, obviously uh, Peter Vincent can't be in it because Roddy McDowell is no longer with us, unfortunately. But I think it'd be cool to have Charlie Brewster now playing the Peter Vincent role. He's an older man who's uh, helping a younger hero, a new hero. And they could have done this with the remake, too. They could have morphed it into a part three, had Anton Yelkin play a young man and um, Charlie Brewster play the Peter Vincent role. But whatever, they already fucked that up. So, uh, Friday Night Part 3, have some young vampire, maybe Evil Ed, maybe Stephen Jeffries returns as Evil Ed. Somebody resurrects Jerry Dandridge, played once again across Chris Sarandon. That would be the freaking tits. I would pay big money to see that. Please make it happen. I'd love to see a Friday Night Part 3. Ignore the crappy remakes. Um, it's one of my favorite movies ever. I would love to see a continuation. I'd love to see Jerry Dandridge return. Or even if it's just Charlie finding new vampires, I'd watch it. Um, but most of all, I'd love Sarandon and Jeffries to return as well. Hell, maybe even Amanda Pierce come back to Amy Peterson. I don't care. Number. Two. Brutal Legend 2. This game. This game. If you're a heavy metal fan, you've got to play this game. This is... I hate that... Tim Schafer had a big idea. It was going to be big. It was going to be great. They cut it down to what it was. So, like, this story gets kind of weird. Like, there's parts missing. No, but I want a, I want a sequel. I want to know, like... What happens next? Because, like, they've teased something, and, oh, my God. I mean, Lemmy's dead. We can... We just start out the game where, like, it's his funeral. Go from there. Because, like, oh, my God, there's so much stuff they could do with this, because it's... Have Jack Black and Rob Halford and Ozzy and any other metal legend you could find come back to do voices. Jack Black was a good choice for the What's weird about the, the, the What's weird about the game is, though, I've said it before, is, like, He's a roadie, the greatest that's ever been. He lives, breathes, eats heavy metal. Yeah. He goes back in time. He meets Lemmy. He meets Ozzy. And he doesn't know who they are. Yeah, Rob Halford, sort and of. <laughs> he meets three different Rob Halfords, technically. <laughs> yeah. The Lion Wyatt. And I was like, the Kill Master. Lemmy. You know what I don't understand, though? Dio was originally supposed to be a voice in the game, too. but Yeah. You know what I don't understand, though? Okay. They have Lita Halford. Okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They brought in Lita Ford anyways to voice a different character. 
Why? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I like Cat Sosa, but it's just, it's weird. It'd be cool to make that into a movie, too. A brutal Legend oh movie. God, yeah, yeah, so many Easter eggs. Great soundtrack. Old school Anthrax. Black Sabbath. Great soundtrack. Anthrax isn't even in the game, which is weird. Yeah, but they have a, they have a song. That, and uh, Metal Thrashing Mad, I think, was in the soundtrack. Maybe a few others. Uh, but yeah, Derek, uh, Eddie Riggs, the main character. Ed, Eddie, of course, from He's Iron Maiden. Jack Black playing Jack Black. Yeah, yeah, pretty Jack much. Black. But a more muscular, fit version. And uh, then, you know, Ed, Eddie like, from... He like young Danzig, back when he was like... Yeah, still, he does. Back yeah. when he was like still something. <laughs> yeah. Eddie from Iron Maiden and Riggs from Derek Riggs, who designed Eddie, Iron Maiden's an ass guy. All kinds of Easter eggs. They're going on about metal Easter eggs. But if you're a metal fan, you'll know what I'm talking about. Great game. Check it out. And they should make a part two. Or make it into a movie. Yeah. All right, well, that brings us to our number one. But uh, first, let's do some honorable mentions. Um, yeah, another Nightmare in no, I, se- I second uh, all his choices. Say, uh, Sabretooth movie, another Hulk movie, damn it. Um, a Nightmare on Elm Street prequel. Um, I'd love to see another Nightmare on Elm Street movie with Robert Englund playing, playing Freddy. Um, you know, actually, come to think of it, I can't think of any honorable mentions. Maybe a Critters 5. <laughs> I don't know. They look at what happened Critters 4. Yeah, true. Let's just get to it. Yeah, let's just get to number one. My number one choice... Revenge of the Living Dead, a sequel to the 1985 horror classic Return of the Living Dead, and uh, cast member Don Kalfa, who played Ernie, who's sadly no longer with us, had an idea for Revenge of the Living Dead. It was going to be a better sequel than all the actual sequels we got. It was going to directly follow the original movie right after the bomb fell. Um, hell, James Karen was going cl- to climb out of the climb out of the crematorium for God's sake and reveal that he didn't get burned up. I'm um, just had a burn scar on his face. Um, it's going to show right what, what happens right after um, Freddy comes right through the, the attic door. Uh, played by Tom Matthews. I also played Tommy Jarvis, I mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, Don Calva. Everybody's going to return. Lena Quigley, <laughs> you know, she was going to be a zombie again. Uh, Spider, played by Miguel Nunez Jr., who was also in Friday 13th Part 5. Everybody was going to return. It was going to be a direct sequel, direct follow-up. It was Don Calva's brilliant idea. I see pictures of it all over the internet of, like, a graphic novel somebody made. I don't know if they finished it or released it or not. Please make it happen. Make it a movie. Sadly, Don Calva's no longer with us. It was his idea. He couldn't return to write it or play Ernie, but I'd love to see a proper sequel to Return of the Living Dead, because all the ones we got didn't feel like sequels. They just felt like rehashes. But yeah, I'd love to see Revenge of the Living Dead. That'd be excellent, because it's one of my favorite movies ever, and I'd love to see a proper follow-up. Number one. We've talked about this for years, and he will agree with me on this. We need an X-Girls movie. <laughs> I mean, like, a prequel that leads into Witch's Ghost, how they got together, became a band, and then follows that into where they pop up again in Legend of the Vampire. I was, about to say, I was about to say that wouldn't really be a sequel, but I guess if you said you yeah, follow Witch's Ghost... Or it Legend starts out Vampire. before that, but it goes through that to something else. It's like... It would be cool to see a Hex Girls movie. We're getting a Netflix show. I'm excited for this, because... might be even better. They're bringing all the voices back. It's about time they got a spin-off. That should have happened. That's been something that should have been in the works for years. They've been around for like, when did Witch's Ghost come out? Like late 90s, early 2000s? 99. 99. It's been, it's been almost, been like 20, almost 20, years, 20 years, man. I want this, because they are the best animated band <laughs> ever for... Except for Death Clock. Reasons. Reasons. I'm not going into detail here, because you don't need to know our sick fantasies. <laughs> so yeah, that's my number one. What about a live-action Hex Girls movie? Ooh. Wait, they'd have, to, get... they'd have to get somebody. They'd have to get some really good actresses, though. That's a good question. Show me your tattoo. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Good old Thorn. Yeah. He's gonna put a spell on you. Yeah. Five minutes into getting this, I was like, "Nah, I can't do this." <laughs> it hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's our top five. I agree. See you later. Later. Thank you for watching.